Welcome to the Smart Reading Strategies webinar recording. This topic will be useful for ACAP, NCPS, HSA and ATIC students. This is a recording of the material we cover in the live webinar of this topic. You may want to just watch the video straight through or use the pause button to stop and do the activities. The webinar slides are available at this link. The goals of this video are to help you learn how to skim and scan a text, read for in-depth understanding, read critically, and synthesize ideas from a variety of sources. But first, let's start right at the beginning. Before reading a text, the key question to ask is, what is my purpose for reading? As this will help you decide how to read the text. Think about the following scenarios. How would you read a text if it was a class textbook reading for this week? a possible source of information for an assignment, or a book you want to read for your own interest. If you are reading a weekly reading set by your educators, you are trying to understand all or most of the information from the text in order to build your knowledge of the topic, so you will read all or most of the text. However, if you are trying to find specific in relation to answer a particular assignment question, you will not read everything you come across. So you can see that in these scenarios, there will be two different approaches to reading. So, the real key to academic reading is to work out what you will read in detail and what you will skim and scan for the information you really need. This slide shows you the overall approach to academic reading, particularly when reading for an assignment, although you will use some of these strategies when reading weekly texts set by your educator. We'll go through each of these steps now. The first step when approaching any reading is to skim it to get an overall impression of what information is contained in the text. This overview helps you to understand the main topics and organisation of the text, which makes the detailed reading easier and more effective. When skimming, move your eyes quickly across the page looking for important words and phrases to get a sense of what each section of the reading is generally about. What should you look for when skimming a book or article? You can pause the video now if you'd like some time to think. When skimming a text, you should look at the front and back cover, the abstract or introduction, the contents page, headings and subheadings, any terms in bold or italics, the first sentence of each paragraph, and any diagrams, charts, graphs, tables and so on. Skimming the text to find the author, year of publication and publishing details is also important as it will help you decide whether the text is written and published by a reputable source and whether it is current. Have a go at skimming the cover and publishing details of this book. You can pause the video now to do the activity, but only allow yourself a minute to skim the text. Remember that skimming should be quick. You should have gotten the sense that the text is good quality as it has been published by a reputable publisher and is quite current. Now let's skim the contents page to get an idea of the content and structure of the book. You can pause the video now to do the activity, but again, only allow yourself a minute to scan the text. You should have noticed that there are two main parts to the text. The first part looks like it contains more general information about conflict, and the second part focuses on strategies for conflict resolution. So in answer to question two, Yes, it could be a suitable source of information for an assignment on conflict styles and conflict resolution skills. The next phase is to then scan the text to look for specific information. Scanning is particularly useful when you have a rough idea about a topic you want to include in your assignment and you are looking for information about that topic. Scanning involves running your eyes over the text without reading in detail. When scanning, you should read quickly and be active with the text. Active reading involves activities such as highlighting, underlining or circling words and phrases, jotting ideas, comments and questions in the margins, making summary notes, marking relevant sections of a page with a post-it, and developing a system that shows which sections are most important or relevant. Let's practice scanning a text to look for some specific information. Imagine that for your assignment, you want to mention some of the reasons why conflict can be good. Quickly scan this section of the text to see if there is any relevant information. Again, this should be a very quick process. You can pause the video now if you like. 
hopefully you will have found a couple of ideas in the text. As I mentioned, part of scanning a text involves being active with it. Here you can see examples of different active reading techniques such as highlighting, underlining and margin notes. Remember that reading actively is the best way to process the information you are reading. After skimming and scanning, you should know what the topic of the text is, what the general structure of the text is, and whether you want to read this text or parts of it in more detail. The next step is to move to reading in detail at the level of individual paragraphs. For each paragraph, make sure you really understand what the author is claiming. The best way to do this is to look at the topic sentence, which should tell you what the paragraph is about. Then examine sentence by sentence, looking for how the main idea is explained or supported. Focus on the linking words like however and for example to help recognise how the ideas are organised. Have a go at reading this paragraph closely and see if you can get to the heart of what the writer is claiming. You can pause the video now if you like. In this paragraph, the author's main point is that frameworks can be used to categorise the ways in which people approach conflict, but there are actually many different factors that need to be considered, so the frameworks could be too simplistic. You will also need to read critically, which means gaining a deeper understanding of the material and seeing that there are layers of meaning within a text. In other words, your reading should occur on three levels. Consider what is literally being said by the author, but also read between the lines as to what is being inferred or suggested by the author. Also think about how these ideas could be applied to the bigger picture of what you are studying. Here's an example of how you could think critically about the information you have just read and how it could be applied to the bigger picture of what you are studying. Pause the video now and have a think about these questions. Reading critically also involves synthesising information from different texts. This means you need to combine information from a range of sources in order to group and present ideas, themes and issues in a logical manner. Generally speaking, your assignments are not simply a series of paragraphs describing each source separately. Instead, an assignment usually involves a higher level of integrating the information, which will give a more comprehensive analysis of the content. One way to help you make connections between texts is to mind map. Here's an example of a mind map on the assignment topic Approaches to Conflict that synthesizes information from four sources. Here the student has grouped the information into three main sections and then created subsections and indicated which readings link to that subsection. If each section is turned into a paragraph, then each paragraph will contain information from two or more different sources. This will give a more comprehensive analysis of the topics than if the information was only taken from one source and simply summarised. The steps on this slide show the overall approach for using your reading in your writing, using all of the strategies we've discussed in this video. When you are ready to start an assignment, first try brainstorming the issues related to your topic. This will give you some keywords you can use to start your literature search. Then, read widely on the topic, focusing on the issues relevant to your assignment. Try making notes in your own words about what each text says about the issues. Remember to look for common ideas in texts. You might want to use colours to highlight similarities. Then, start to create a mind map and group ideas together. This makes it easier to compare the content of the various texts. Keep adding to the mind map as you read. When you're ready to start writing, use your mind map to decide on a logical order for the information you want to include in your writing. Then, start to draft your paragraphs using your notes. Use a topic sentence to introduce the theme of the paragraph then use the synthesised information to develop your ideas. Make sure you reference your sources. Here are a few final tips. Tip number one, read actively. This means doing tasks before, during and after reading to help you understand and remember. Try some of the strategies listed on the slide. As you can see, tasks can be mental, such as asking questions, or a combination of mental and physical, such as note taking. Tip number two is to consider creating a reading log. This is a way to record and keep summaries of your sources that you will use in assignments. You can fill in the reading log by jotting down a note on each paragraph to make a short outline. 
This may simply be identifying the paragraph topic and some related points. The final tip is to use reading to develop your writing skills. If you are uncertain how to write introductions or conclusions or use topic sentences, watch carefully as you read. You can also learn how to write developed paragraphs or how to incorporate references and quotes well by reading and observing these skills. For more help and information on academic reading, check out these links. Also be sure to check out the Student Learning Support website for lots of resources. Feel free to contact Student Learning Support if you have any questions or if you would like to request an individual consultation with an advisor. Good luck with your academic reading this term.